Yeah, well, I mean, I think the, the first step for me was um, doing shit that I was really uncomfortable with. Mm-hmm. So uh, jujitsu was probably the first one that I really like went into. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never done any martial arts or any... Uh, I had just played like ball sports and then I got hurt from ball sports and so I went into powerlifting. <laughs> <laughs> and so like essentially like there was... Uh, I just was pretty rigid. Mm-hmm. And so going to jujitsu was, was super uh, impactful for me because I, I went into this um, this class where basically uh, I was at that time a lot bigger. And so I thought of myself as like a big, strong dude. Mm. And yeah, I was getting my ass kicked by like guys a lot smaller than me, women, and even a little girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, humbling. So you just, yeah, man. Like, so now I like, I try to actually look for those situations where I can be humbled. And, um, I think that then like that sparked a bunch of different, you know, like things in my life as far as like, made me real like came to a lot of realizations about like why my personality is the way it is and i've been able to work on those since then um but i mean i think i think like something that just uh, like one simple thing you can do that i think everyone should do regularly is put themselves in an uncomfortable situation where you really are a beginner Mm. and all so always having something that you are a white belt in and i mean like you're going to learn so much about not just about like what you're doing. You like, you get to learn about yourself in those situations so yeah, much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the big one, right? Is, is, um, kind of like these things are metaphors and, you know, you think you're learning jujitsu, but really like you're learning how to a little bit more about yourself and how you're being in the world and everything. Um, Oh, so you mentioned about you were going in there, a big, strong dude power lifter and everything um so do you think that the rigidity that you had in your body like physically translated to your mental state as well of course yeah yeah uh i think i think there is usually a lot of um translation of like how someone moves to how they are in real in person um their their personality and um their mental tendencies so one thing that i do regularly is i go to this thing called ecstatic dance where basically it's an open dance floor Uh, it happens usually once or twice a week you could probably find one near you if you hopped on the internet Mm -hmm. but essentially they just there's just it's like a club but during the day and there's (laughs) uh, no talking and there's no um there's supposed to be no substances. So usually everyone's sober. And so it's just a, uh, a way for people to like truly let go and express themselves. And, um, yeah, like when you see people let go, like you can, you get to see into who they are a little bit Mm -hmm. when, uh, and, um, that process of learning who I was, uh, dance played a huge role in like realizing, who I was as a person because mm. all these like things would come up and out for me as I like went to these things and like just let go and like saw what com- came out of my body. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when you're around people that are letting go, it's easier for you to let go. Right. Oh, yeah, man. Like, yeah. uh, even, even now, like sometimes I'll go into, uh, I'll go with the intention to go like move around and dance and just kind of let go into, in a yoga room by myself. And I can't do it. Like sometimes you need that little Mm. stimulus of someone else, of other people around saying like, do you go Mm. for it. It's okay. (laughs) That's really cool. Like sometimes you can't even accomplish it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of the power of community and, um, being in a, not just a group, but, um, a group of like-minded and kind of understanding people, I think. Yeah. 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 And I think it's really important to move with people, right? Whether to an ecstatic dance or um just a few friends that are kind of into the same thing to go and play in a park or whatever yeah i mean uh 
uh, one of my buddies always describes it as the skateboarder effect, mm. but basically like you should have a group of people that you kind of continually check in with. And if someone in the group learns something new, then everyone in the group learns something new because they're going to bring it back to the group and they're going to show everyone like, check out this new thing, whatever. I mean, we could be talking about whatever. It could just be an exercise, but yeah. you know, like, yeah, uh, totally. And one thing that, I mean, this is kind of on, it's a little off topic, but along the same lines is we've talked about this a lot, um, is like the four minute mile effect has happened with me and you so many times of like, I can't do something. And then I train with Trevor he can do it. I see him do it and I'm instantly able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it's important too, to like, uh, have, have people that you train with regularly or semi-regularly that are both a higher level than you and a lower level. Um, cause there's, there's benefit in seeing how someone does some, something higher level and hearing their explanations. But then also like you, getting to be almost in a, 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 sli- a teacher role yeah. a little bit is, uh, uh, it's obviously super important. You know, everyone knows like teaching something helps you learn it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I did a community post, um, before the podcast and also an Instagram post. You could follow us on Instagram. It's at the strength side. Um, but Carlos, he asked if you could just give one advice to someone trying to become more in tune with himself, what would it be? Love your work and content, bro. Keep it coming. Carlos, I liked your question, man. So, um, yeah, let's give it, what do you think, Trevor? Um, in tune with yourself. Let's see. So I think we, we talked about what, what I would think already, um, which is, I think putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations and seeing what comes out, that's kind of a philosophical sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, so uh, almost in exact contrast to that, I think controlling variables is very important. Mm. So like making sure that the things you can control are controlled for on a regular basis, not meaning that like you should be like, so rigid all the time that your life is fucking boring but like you should be sleeping you should be getting to bed and waking up at a pretty constant time right and same with food like you should be eating a pretty regular diet and so like when things come up so like say you do change your exercise then you know that like if for better or worse you know it was the exercise that was the biggest change rather than just, I didn't fucking sleep for three nights in a row and I feel shittier. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to blame it on this hamstring stretch. I started doing, you know, (laughs) it sounds so stupid, but I work with people like I'm a train. I, I train people for a living and it's crazy how much people don't see it that way. Yeah. And don't understand. Um, yeah. So I think, so kind of almost finding some freedom in being more disciplined. Yeah. And I think that, you know, sometimes maybe people hear me talking a lot about, you know, like getting out of the gym and like playing more and, and, and finding freedom and movement and stuff. But that doesn't mean that like we're not, that I'm not training and that I'm not, you know, really like dialing in everything that I'm doing, right? It's like you have to strike that balance of trying to um, create for yourself like a a life that's going to be most productive in in really trying to like push yourself and have goals and staying to a regimen Um, and then balance that out with some of the other stuff that we've talked about, about trying to let go, about, you know, dancing, (laughs) moving, right? Going to do some type of activity that's getting you out of your comfort zone, right? Those have to be in balance for, um, I mean, I'm saying it has to be in balance, but if you want, I think if you want to fuel your self growth, then those are two things that you want to like pay close attention to. Yeah. I mean, one, one, uh, one way this comes up in my life very regularly is if I don't, um, if I don't clear my checklist or to-do list, then 
I never feel like I can fully relax, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so creating this the kind of boundaries and stability to say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna get all my shit done so that when I go do dance, when I go and dance, I don't have these things floating around in my mind that say, well, I still gotta go do this and that, because yeah. then you actually aren't able to like fully be in the moment, and present, and yeah. in that flow state. Um, it's it's always gonna be pulling you out. Yeah. So. Um, creating that, creating the stability is what gives you more freedom. Totally. Yeah. I completely relate to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the only thing that I'd add to, what was it? Carlos? Carlos. Carlos. The only thing I'd add, uh, for becoming more in tune with yourself is that actually I wrote an email about this this week and that's just, um, doing some type of reflection, practice like I'm really big on journaling I try to journal every morning um, and I think the reason why is because you'll actually see some things pop up that maybe you're feeling a certain way about something in your life that you didn't really realize that you were feeling a certain way it gives you a chance to like really ask yourself how you feel about about anything you know what I mean and um, meditation is another way that this can happen uh, but I think it can definitely drive that same type of end result of like really like having some big realizations um, about yeah about your life and about hey maybe like maybe I don't like this certain thing that's happening that I thought I liked you know or whatever yeah um, meditation and journaling are something I, I do regularly as well um, one thing that I started doing recently is I, I have about a 30 minute drive to work in the morning and I used to fill that with um, music, but even a lot of times it was podcasts and audiobooks and stuff. And, sure. you know, when I first started commuting, I was like, oh, man, like I'm going to use that time so productively. Mm. It's going to be so productive. That's the word I kept coming back to is like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn so much when I drive. And, <laughs> yeah. and now I'm realizing that sitting in silence on my drive is the most productive thing I can do because mm. it's just uh, it's the same thing we were just talking about it's like you're confronted with all of the shit that you try to like kind of push away push out of your mind yeah. constantly yeah. and so I always um, I always get to work with all these ideas and like uh, you know how I'm gonna like change x or y in my life and how I'm gonna you know whatever and uh, I think like that's that's my form, uh, most powerful form of like of reflection. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Actually, reminds me of a conversation I had with our other brother Mitch. Shout out, sit with Mitch sit with on Mitch. Instagram. Um, <laughs> it was we talked about like the the power of like removing things from your life. Like when you get into this um, self growth, like. Uh, you know, area, it's like, well, you want to read all the books and you want to journal every morning and you, you know, you want to like, um, listen to really like, uh, important things on your drives. But, um, sometimes like taking things out and allowing yourself to just be a little bit more, um, really can like trigger, <laughs> like understanding yourself a little bit more and understanding maybe what you need to do to be more content or more happy yeah yeah i think uh the the first time i was confronted with that was i uh uh last year i think i spent a uh i spent a week out at our cabin mm. by myself and i tried to not use any electronics i wasn't 100 percent successful but um i after like a few days, I realized like, man, I got a lot of other people's thoughts floating around in my head. <laughs> what do you mean by that? It's just because you're constantly listening to other people talk. Like I was mm. listening to podcast after podcast and mm. audiobook after audiobook until like it took me a few days to like f to like start to hear my voice inside of my own head mm. and like uh, and and not other people's ideas and voices coming through my like my consciousness, you know. Yeah. Like, what, how do I actually feel about that? Damn. Yeah. Um. And that was uh that was something I reflected on a lot, and you know, like it's a constant battle because you, it's it's an uphill battle because you're fighting against 
basically our, how our world is set up like our 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 world is set up that we're on our phones and we are on instagram and we're on facebook and we have tvs and so you're constantly just reading and hearing other people talk 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 and so i think removing is probably the most productive thing most of us can do yes yeah for sure i think uh this concept of like consume like intelligently you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like because you can use I mean, I hope you're listening to this podcast, like being inspired or learning something, right? And you can definitely use. Yeah, we're talking shit on podcasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On a podcast. <laughs> but I mean, like, you can definitely use, even being on Instagram, like, you can use it for motivation, you can use it for inspiration. But it's when it becomes like that thing that just never leaves your life and you're like living in a, a, a different fantasy digital world, that's when it's really bad, right? But. You can definitely like use it as a tool, but you have to kind of set up some guidelines for yourself. I think it's pretty yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really struggle uh, with uh, technology in general. So yeah. uh, I got rid of all, or I guess I shouldn't say I didn't get rid of. I still have Instagram, um, but uh, I think Instagram is the only one I have out of all the social medias and nice. I don't, I haven't been on it in months now. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's been, I think three months. Damn. So how's that feel? Dude, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> how, <laughs> how much more time I have. First of all, yeah. uh, I'm so much more productive. And then also you start to notice, like I'm starting to notice when other people are on Instagram, like when I'm with them and I'm just seeing them like be on their phone, not just Instagram, but just be on their phone and be consumed by it and how that it's like a tick. It's like, oh, there's an un- there here's an uncomfortable moment. Let me grab my phone and shove that shit away. Yeah. You know, instead of just like being present in the moment, everyone is constantly reaching for this thing that can give that can give them an escape. Mm-hmm. And so the more you have to just deal with the those uncomfortable moments. I think the more you're, uh, I mean, it's exactly what it's, it's like meeting, meeting those head on is how you actually start to like figure out what you need to work on. Right. Right. And I think overall it's, it's more relaxing. I mean, Oh dude, my <laughs> sleep changed I mean, yeah. pretty immediately after I got rid of uh, right. all the screen time. Cause I mean, I'm, you know, I don't really know what I'm talking about here, but I, I hear people say like, when you check Instagram, you get like a dopamine rush or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. And it like, it feels good for that instant, but it's not, it's not, um, it's not well being. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, you're constantly stimulated rather than when you're not doing that. Like you can relax and be a little parasympathetic. Yeah. That ain't bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I think it's like a, it's like a false reward. Whereas like I'm starting to realize like what the real rewarding things are in my life, you know, mm. like finishing a training session is very rewarding to mm. me yeah. and that it feels so good. Like I accomplished something, but it does feel very similar to just picking up your phone and checking Instagram. So like being aware of that, those things are different because one is actually very productive for your life. Right. Whereas one is just like this quick thing that doesn't give you anything. No. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's that's that's what makes it hard is like you have to get rid of as much of those things as you can so you start to realize what actually is uh is a productive and uh like sense of uh, accomplishment yeah right right wow that's powerful stuff that's powerful stuff man all right so um well last thing is uh don't follow you on Instagram, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> but you can. It's it's hash pueblo, right? Yeah, I think it's hash underscore pueblo, hash underscore pueblo. Um, and you teach a class on the internet. Yeah, yeah, that's a a new thing as of last week. Um, we're live streaming a hip strength and mobility class um, through Upright Live. Um, or upright health is the company and then we upright live is our streaming service um yeah you can check it out it's uh basically just working on all things hips um as well as just lower lower body and core stuff you know like spine health and stuff um uh i'm really excited about it because it's uh uh i think a lot of people want to work with 
with us and just aren't able to. So now we get to, you know, give them enough of, of as much of a, uh, me and us as I can. So, yeah. 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 And I like the idea of, um, this just being a way to kind of cover, it sounds like you're covering like just strengthening hips and lower body in general, right? It's not like you're doing like one specific thing with like one specific goal. It's like, no, we're just going to become well-rounded in the hips. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the intention is that every class hits basically every motion your hip can do. Um, and That's obviously, dope. like, there's there's too many things to hit at all. Um, but then also, like, I, I, I try to be very explicit about, like, you know, the, the class is there for you to be well-rounded. But also, outside of the class, you need to be paying attention to what you, exactly what we've talked about on this podcast, like, what what was very challenging for you and then look at that as the low hanging fruit it's like well like i need to work on this so then the rest of the week i would expect you to be doing a little bit every day right of like working on something that you sucked at sure you yeah know? <laughs> so it's just it becomes a way for you to explore your own body your own hips yeah that's really awesome giving mm-hmm. just people the tools to um to kind of take it into their own hands right yep yeah, yeah, that's dope. Well, uh, if you guys are interested in that, I'll throw a link in the description below. Check it out. Um, thanks for joining us here. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to like the video, podcast video, the UCast. Uh, subscribe to Strength Side as always. 